God. Hallelujah. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
wonderful selections. Hallelujah. And before I go any further, I want to wish all the mothers that are here a happy Mother's Day. And those that are tuning in, happy Mother's Day. Hallelujah. Without you, we wouldn't be here today. Thank God for all the mothers. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And also want to thank the saints. Hallelujah. They continue to keep our bishop and first lady in our prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're on vacation. Hallelujah. They made it to Texas City. Hallelujah. And we just thank you, God, that you continue to cover them and keep them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and we also pray that they will enjoy themselves and get all the rest needed so they can come back and, and feed us from on high. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I came this morning expecting God to do something. Those with your Bibles, can you turn with me to 1 Samuel? Chapter 1, and I'm going to be reading verse 6 and 7, then I'm going to jump to verse 17 and 18, and then I'm going to go to Isaiah 40 and 30, first verse. 1 Samuel, chapter 1, beginning at verse 6, and it reads as such. And her adversary also provoked her sword, for to make her fret. Because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Jump down to um, verse 17 and it reads, And then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition. That thou hast asked of him, and she said, Let thy handmaiden may find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 reads, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, we Lord. thank you. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your word, because your word shall not return to you void, but it will accomplish what you said out to do, yes, Lord. Lord. Lord, we thank you for those that have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying yes. to the church, to Lord. the church, Lord. And we thank you, Lord God. Thank you. We thank you, Lord God, that whatsoever we bind on earth, they'll be bound in heaven. And whatsoever we loose on earth, they'll be loose in heaven. So, Lord, we thank you that our hope is truly rooted and grounded in thee and thee alone. I decrease that you increase. Anoint these lips of clay that I speak your word with Holy Ghost boldness. That it be food for those that have an ear to hear what your spirit is saying. And we thank you. And we magnify you. We glorify you. We lift you up. We worship you. In spirit and in truth. In Jesus mighty name. We pray. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor. Provoked. But still waiting. You may take your seats. You know, when God gave me this message, I, I said, Lord, it's Mother's Day. He said, I want you to go and I want you to talk about Hannah. You know, we always talk about her giving birth, but nobody really spent a lot of time talking about Hannah. Hannah, hallelujah. Before I get started, Hannah was, a, was uh, and tonight, uh, was her husband and he had two wives. Paniah was one and Hannah was the other. Paniah was the one that gave birth. Paniah was the one that um, had sons and daughters. And Hannah, she 
could not conceive. The Lord shut up her womb. It starts off by saying that God shut up her womb. So no, nobody need to say that Hannah made a mistake. It was just not her time yet. And a lot of times what the enemy wants to do, the enemy wants us to get so caught up in what God not doing. All right. Uh, we know God got a purpose on our, our life, but the enemy wants to dwell on the fact that, oh, you say you say, but yet you still struggling. You say you say, but yet you not producing. You say you say, but yet I see you lost your car, lost your house. You say you say. See, this is the thing. We think that when we see people lose things or don't have things, we think that they sin and fall short of the glory of God. But in this message, I want you to I want to paint the picture of Hannah. Try. Before she became a mother, she went through some stuff that will almost make you lose your mind, but she per she persevered. She she stayed the course every year after year. Then she had to deal with this messy woman. Now we don't we're not living in a time where, where the husband has two wives, he only got one wife, but you can deal with today's society, we can deal with some mess that can be so provoking. It will cause us to lose our mind if we're not careful. It can be the stress raising the kids. It can be stress on the job. It can be stress in the home. It can be stress right. dealing with so many people that you come in contact with that can cause you to be in a provoking state of mind. But Hannah, she had to deal with this year after year. See, this is the thing. That every year he took, and I took his whole house to Shiloh, mm -hmm. to worship, and to give a sacrifice to the Lord. For he is good, and his mercy endured forever. Every single year. But it's, it's, it's funny. Now, they all knew the purpose of why they had to go to Shiloh. But Benaiah, only thing she had on her mind was making Hannah miserable. You ever been around somebody that always talk negative? Don't have nothing positive to say. Always got to be negative. Why you dress like that? Why you look like that? You never took the time to say, what's going on? Is everything all right? Whatever it is, God's going to see you through. He's going to make a way. But the thing about Hannah, Hannah, she did not entertain. She entertain yes, she entertained because it caused her to do something unnatural. It caused her to cry so much, so hard, that it changed her countenance. And every single year, she had to deal with that messy woman. They live in the same house, but she had to deal with that messy woman. Every time she's giving birth, every time she's seeing, she's giving birth and she's still bearing. Every single year she's dealing with it, year after year, year after year. But she still go faithfully to shadow, to the house of the Lord, to look of the Lord, to give praise, to give worship, and give her sacrifice. All right. Every single year. I can imagine in her mind, and I said, Lord, you gave me this message, the talk uh, uh, on Mother's Day, and I was saying, Lord, what are you saying? He was saying, you know what? It wasn't time for her to give birth the son to, 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 to Samuel yet. And we got to understand that we all have purpose in the body, but just because somebody else is producing and you're not producing yet, that doesn't mean your time has overlapped you. You still have purpose in the body. But what I love about Hannah, she prayed to God. She was an earnest prayer. She prayed earnestly. Even when she wept, even when she cried, she prayed so earnestly that it caused something, it caused her confidence to change that even her husband and he, he, he saw her and he said, he said, he said, he said I give you double portion. Yes, yes, Padaya, her and, and her kids get a portion, but what I give you is, is, is more 
God's intentions. See, and what, what the thing is, the, the thing about this message is, love can't be the only thing that we expect to receive. Love isn't just enough when you know you have purpose and you're not fulfilling that purpose that you was created yeah. to do. All right. See, giving birth is something every woman should expect to experience. Every woman should expect to experience that. Because it's an opportunity to bring the life that God has blessed you with into this world. God. So for years, Hannah had to deal with this messy woman that kept, even if, you know, you ever had somebody just was so messy, they're always in your ear with foolishness, and then they leave, and then that mess is still in your ear. Come on, man. You can't focus, you can't see, uh, as far as that door that the ushers are, are, are standing at right now, it's so messy. And it frustrates you to the point that it provokes you. I can't stand it. You better come on. I can't stand it. Come on now. I can do this here. All right. I can't stand to hear their voice. Every time I turn around, they just speaking like I'm not worthy to be who God called me to be. I'm not worthy to be a vessel used by God. They just messy. All they can see is my thought and don't look and see that I'm in need of something. Right. Help us, Lord. Provoke, but still waiting. Hannah showed us that years after years, she was being provoked, but she was still waiting on that promise. How many of us gave up once we've been provoked? How many of us went and said, you know what? You hit me, I'm going to hit you back. You spit on me, I'm going to spit on you back. In other words, we're not waiting on the Lord. We try to do it our own self. But hell has something inside of her that in spite of this turmoil I'm feeling in my house, in spite of that my husband is trying to love me and, uh, 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 above anything that I can think or even imagine, but I'm still empty. Mm -hmm. Woo. I'm missing something. All right. I know I have purpose in the kingdom, but I'm missing something. Come on, I'm missing that the fact that I desire to give birth, but I have not received that right. seed yet. And what God is saying, he's using this as an example. Even though you may be struggling today, but wait on God. Wait on him. Because all the promises of God in him is genuine. Amen. Wait on him. And when you've got all that standing, you stand anyhow. See, the beauty about Hannah was this. Every year she went through that same uh, motion uh, of, of, of being um, provoked by Benaiah. But, but the thing about Hannah was she always cried. And she always was sad. But this particular time, she cried so hard that it got the priest's attention. All right, come on. She cried so hard that he thought that she was drunk. Because the reason he assumed she was drunk, because and they just he just got finished watching them drink and be married because they were in the presence of God. But Hannah did not drink anything. She didn't taste any strong thing. She was so fed up and sick and tired of every year dealing with this issue, dealing with this woman that was so messy. She was so sick and tired. She was like, I can, I can, I can feel that she was so tired of being tired that she cried so that that the man of God, it got the man of God attention, and he thought that she was drunk, but she wasn't drunk. She was in the spirit. In other words, she, she got to that place like Jacob when he wrestled with God. He said, Lord, I'm not going to turn you loose until you bless me. She cried so. That means if, she, if, if it appeared that she was drunk, that means when 
she was crying, she could barely stand. She was wobbling. She was shaking. And I can just imagine her word, her, her speech was slurred. She can't even get it out. In other words, all he did was assume she was drunk and he saw her mouth moving but nothing was coming out. That's right. That's right. The only thing she was doing was praying and crying to God. And I can just imagine she was saying, Lord, fill my cup. Lord, take this pain away. Lord, use me. Every year, she brought something to God. Even though she was and she came in, in, she left in. She brought worship and she brought sacrifice. All right. She brought worship and she brought sacrifice. How many times you went through something expecting God to do something and you worshiping Him and it seemed like it never was going to happen, but you kept sacrificing. Every day you got up, you expecting God to fill your cup, but it didn't happen. And you kept worshiping, you kept sacrificing. This is what Hannah was doing. Yeah. And she was saying, I'm tired of being provoked, yeah. but I'm still waiting. Right. I'm tired of being picked on, but I'm still waiting. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of hearing I'm not worthy, but I'm still waiting. See, you got to understand the promise that God spoke on your life. Hallelujah. This for you, baby. All right. This is not for oh. nobody else. This for you. If we set you up, hallelujah, be the head and not the tail. Believe him. If he say you want to be healed, believe him. If he say you want to give birth, believe him. But you have to wait. My time is not your time. But all our time is God's time. All right. Let me say that again. My time is not your time. But all our time is God's time. In other words, when it comes to you, whenever God step in and make it come to pass, then it's on time. Hannah got Eli's attention. But there was something unique about this time. See, Eli's sons were priests in Shiloh. So all those other years, I don't think they were old enough to hold the office of priest. So they had to be in position for God to uh, have to bring forth Samuel. We know when, when, when God, see, see, see the thing about uh, I love about Hannah. Before she even conceived, she went there and made a vow to the Lord. If you grant me to give birth to a man child, I will not have a razor touch his hair. In other words, I will not cut on him. I will not scar him. I will make sure that he is able to be fit and pure for your use. This was before the, the Eli even said, I, I pray God, the Lord grant you your petition. She made that vow in her crying state. She made that vow in that state where she was just frustrated. She was discombobulated. She was pushed aside, ridiculed, talked about, but she still made a vow. Can you get over yourself and still be committed to the purpose that God has on your life? Provoked, but still waiting. Provoked, but still frustrated. Provoked, but still holding on. Provoked, but still calling on the name of the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised. Hannah. She showed us what courage was all about. Standing her ground even though everything else was shaky around. Standing her ground even though she was picked at. Standing her ground even though she, she, she wasn't being used as a wife that she desired to. Now there's some women that don't want to have kids. But there's plenty that, that, that desire to have kids. I 
remember, if my wife don't mind me sharing, sharing this, I remember when we first got married. We was on the verge of adoption. One of her friends, best friends, um, works as an adoption agent. She placed kids in suitable homes. We were on the verge of we done put things in place to where we were we ready to say, okay, let's open up our house to bring a child in and raise it like our own. We were on the verge, but then it was uh, Mother Collins. Uh, we went to a revival. And Mother Collins prayed for my wife's womb. We've been married almost two years. She prayed for her womb. We did not know that Mother Collins was going to pass shortly after that. But she prayed for her womb. And then we, we were able to, nine months later. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. She gave birth to Jeffrey. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But it didn't stop there. See, the thing is, we, met, we, we always talk about Samuel and how great a prophet he was, but nobody dwelled on and talked about his mother. And understand that the trial that his mother went through, hallelujah, and at that time she had to deal with all that mess from that other wife. But that mess that she dealt with made her get on her knees, made her stay before God, made her trust in the Lord with all that heart and lean not to her own understanding until that time came where she can acknowledge who God is. The moment the high priest Eli spoke, whatever your petition is, I pray that the Lord Immediately, she, her continence changed. She got herself together. She put some food in her belly because she went without eating while everybody else was having a good time. Mm -hmm. And then she went home and the word of God said that that night when they got home. Ananias slept with his wife. And that moment she received her breakthrough. Amen. Glory to God. What am I saying, sis? Don't be satisfied with just coming to church, going through the same routine over and over again. Come with high expectations. That's right. Glory to God. The saying say he may not come when you want him, but he will always be on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. What she did, she flipped the script on the enemy. One translation said, Paniah was her adversary. Right. An adversary is somebody that you go against constantly. That's right. So Paniah did not just mess with her in Shiloh. That means she been messing with her at home. Right. So you mean to tell me I got to deal with this mess? Hallelujah in the house of God. I got to deal with this mess. Hallelujah, when I came to worship and, and sacrifice, give sacrifice to him, I still got to deal with this messy woman. So in other words, that let me know that sometimes when we come and press our way to the house, we're going to deal with some mess up in here. Whoa, That's right. That's right. We're going to deal with some things that just make us so uncomfortable. We're going to have to deal with some people talking about us. 
We like to deal with some people uh, mis, uh, uh, scandalizing our name. We like to deal with some people that feel like they tell you that you're not worthy to be used by God. So what you know my past. So what? But if you know all the hell that I went through to get to where I am, then you understand why I gave you my best. Into his courts with thanksgiving. Into his court with praise. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Into his house with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Thank you, Jesus. What shall you render unto God? Should you wait till somebody pump you up to worship him? Or are you going to enter and give him the fruit of your lips? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What made the upper room experience so meaningful for a believer's life is the fact they were there on one accord. But it was also talked about how the, the Spirit of the Lord filled the whole house. We're the body of Christ, so our expectation should be in a filled house. Hannah kept waiting. Hannah kept waiting. Provoked, but she still believed. Provoked, she still had faith. Provoked, and she made a remark, I will call on the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord. She got to that place. That he is worthy to be praised. Lord. That means she had to die to herself. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. But oh, when she gave birth, if you read the story of Hannah, when she gave birth, she took she did not take him until he was able to be weaned right. from her. So that means that every year Andy and I went to Shiloh when she gave birth to Samuel, she stayed back to make sure that when she took him, he belonged to God. That's right. Yeah. Come on now. Right. Give him back. Right. So the very thing that she was praying God to bless her with, she gave back. She honored the vow that she spoke before she conceived. Right. So the challenge today is, can we still honor All right. the Lord Thank you, Jesus. with the promise that we gave him when he saved us? Thank you, Lord. Can we still render to him what he is just to? I will bless the Lord at all times. Glory to God. And his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? All right. Glory. Thank you, Lord. I will trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to my own understanding and all my ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. If you hear me today, are you going to keep the promise that you spoke when you say yes, Lord? All right. All right. Because Hannah kept the promise even though she had the wage year after year and struggle with that messy woman but she waited yes lord Isaiah 40 hallelujah 31 says this look at your neighbor and say neighbor provoked but still waiting Isaiah 40 and 31 says but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew 
their strength. So every year, God kept renewing Hannah's strength. Even though she didn't receive the seed yet, but he kept renewing her strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Even though she was weary, but God took it away. She kept running and she kept walking and she did not faint. Then Jeremiah took it in my closing. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. Mm -hmm. To give you an expected end. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I have an expected end. I have expected Everybody stand here. Provoked, but still waiting. Talked about, but still waiting. Dealing with sicknesses in my body, but I'm still waiting. Having money issues, I'm still waiting. Relationship issues, I'm still waiting. God is always looking to show himself strong in a believer's life. Can we truly say that we're going to wait? Even if we're struggling, we still want to wait. Even if we can't see our way out, we still want to wait. The trials of our faith work in patience, patience and experience. And experience hope. Hope make us not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ that is shared abroad in our hearts. Perhaps it's you today that desire a closer walk with God and you know that God has purpose on your life. Just as Hannah had to wait for the manifestation that take place. I encourage each of us that while we're waiting, we're going to worship and we're going to bring our sacrifice. All right. We're going to worship and we're going to bring our sacrifice. Thank you, Lord. We're going to worship and we're going to bring our sacrifice because we did not come into his presence empty handed. We came with praise on our lips.
Hallelujah. If you know that you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, run to this altar. The altar is open. But when you come, open your arms. Don't fold them. Let the Lord know that you're ready to receive what he has for you. Whatever you're in need of, God's got it. If you need healing, God's got it. If you need deliverance, God's got it. If you need your heart knitted back together again after being broken in pieces, God's got it. He has everything that we need. Everybody hands lifted. I'm not going to push you. Because where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. He give us the freedom to worship Him. With our hands. With our feet. With our lips. Hallelujah. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. By you stepping out on faith, brother, God is meeting your needs right now. He's giving you the petition that you said to him on your knees.